March Madness. It's going to continue with the Tronxy X5S. There's, there's a five in there somewhere, and, and that's the point. It's a kit printer that you build. You can get it from GearBest, you can get it from Amazon. And this young man here, who visits me a lot in the maker space, is the one who actually built it. So let's meet Isaac, and let's talk about the printer. Cool? Yep. Hey everybody, before we get back into the interview with that remarkable young man who built the Tronxy X5 and has in fact built many of the other 3D printers that I am reviewing this month. He built the Rostock uh, GTEC 301 that I'll be reviewing, he built the CR10 that I did review, and he built the X5S almost completely on his own. I want to talk for a second about kit printers. When you get a 3D printer that is a kit, that is essentially just a big box of parts, there is the possibility that it will be a better 3D printer that you could buy for the same price uh, pre-assembled. Because you're not paying for that labor, and so they can put a few extra parts in there uh, that you get to build and have a higher quality 3D printer. And Tronxy definitely sells themselves as being that. There are some advantages to the X5S over a CR10, and I compare those two because they're both in that family of 3D printers that I feel like we need a name for, of very large build volumes, 300 by 300 by 300 or 400, uh, but that are very economical in price. The Tronxy X5S has a core XY movement system, which one, is just plain cool. It's got two belts that go around and in order to move like forward, both of the belts have to move in opposite directions. In order to move left, like they, I, they, they, their movement is just way weird and cool. It's like a Etch-a-Sketch, but of the worst kind. But the computer can sort it all out and make it work. And because of that, it's got a frame that goes around the entire thing, meaning it would be trivial to build an enclosure for this 3D printer. Half of the enclosure is already there. It's practically just a couple of sheets of plexiglass and you're done. A um, little bit more than that because you'd have to extend the plexiglass on certain sides. With a CR10 with that Y table moving forward and backwards so much, it's difficult to build an enclosure for it. So points for the Tronxy on this one. There is also the aspect of the sweat equity that you're putting into it. A lot of people, when they build a 3D printer themselves, own that 3D printer in a way that you don't when it's just pull it out of the box and run it. Um, if it breaks, you go, oh wait, I put that there, I can take it apart and fix it and, and make it work. And, and you have this intimacy with the machine that you don't get from a machine that's already pre-built. Taking a kit and building it and then using it to make stuff is, to some people, uh, the, the heart of the maker movement. Uh, that, that, you know, one thing that you have to do in making if you want to really make. And I don't know how much I subscribe to that. Me, I'm a bit more of a designer. I like to do cool stuff and then throw it at the printer and have the printer just work and make it. It's, it's a utility to me, not a tool that I have to feel like I've made. But then again, I do fix my 3D printers quite a lot, so maybe I'm kind of between on that argument. But it's something to consider. Would I recommend this printer in the general case? I don't know. We are having some troubles getting this 3D printer to work at the makerspace, and he's taking it home and he's gonna continue working on it. Right now, it seems like the extruder motor is getting too hot, meaning that the filament coming out is getting soft and then the tooth gear is tearing into it, and so prints aren't completing. And, you know, he's gonna figure it out and he's gonna make that work. And if that is the experience that you want, if you want to have a machine that you can tinker with and feel a unquestionably great sense of accomplishment when you get it to work, then the Tronxy X5 is a great machine. And, and I feel like after a certain amount of time and, and tuning and fixing, you will have a 3D printer that is superior in any way to a CR10 or any machine that you put together. But there will be a very long and rough road to get there so just be aware of that whenever you buy this or any other kit printer. I don't know if I would say 
that I recommend this as a kit printer for a kit printer. My ANET A8 went together much easier and it's been working without trouble. So I kind of like that one, but this one's got a bigger build area and it's easier to enclose. So I kind of like that. I'm between on this one and I'm going to let you guys make the decision on that. So I, I just keep these things in mind. Now, hopefully you can hear what's said in the interview. This young man is remarkable, but my roving mic setup is not. It's pretty much just whatever mic is on the camera that I have for that, and it's not great. I need to get uh, a better mic and be able to do this sort of thing in the future. I hope that I will be able to, but I might need your help to do that. Need some upgrades. Need some upgrades to this space. But never mind. Let's go talk to this young man about this 3D printer. Okay, Isaac, tell me a little bit about building this uh, Tron C X5S. What did you think? Well, overall, it was pretty fun. There were a few problems like that. So, yeah, the, the Tron X 5 x has a Core XY, which means that it's got crossing built. And yeah, we did it wrong the first time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it really messed the whole thing up. But, well, and the other thing that we messed up was we had the motors for the X and Y swapped. And that had the weirdest effect. I did not expect the effect that that had because it's got these crossing belts. It homed, which way did it home? Well, it homed this way like it's supposed to, but then it starts moving backwards. Yeah, so left and right there. still worked as anticipated, but front and back was swap. Oh, and then there was the, the, the Y stop. Yeah. And you had to come up with a solution for that one. Pretty much. Yeah. So the limit switch would come over here and it would completely miss that. That's not glued on. It's not glued on. We got to work on that a little bit. But yeah, it, it would miss the. So the, the limit switch just kind of shot right underneath the laser cut part and wouldn't touch it at all. And how'd you fix that? Well, I went in a Tinkercad and just made a block and printed it and glued it on. And yeah. I didn't have to pay for it because it was only one cat. Yeah. And it was for this. It was, it was a, a uh, uh, just like a calibration cube that he just hot glued on there. So cool. <laughs> Fantastic solution. So. Isaac, let's talk a little bit about you. Why do you love making and building? Why do I see you here at the Makerspace so often? When did you first get into making? So pretty much what happened was when I was in fifth grade, when I was in Lego League, one of my teachers brought in a 3D printed fidget spinner. Of course, they're the rage, so yeah. that got my attention. And then I was like, cool, is that 3D printed? And she was like, yeah. And so that inspired me to dispose of every Christmas present and just say- You just traded them all in for yeah, a 3D printer. Pretty much. And yet, do you regret that decision? No. This is an endless Christmas machine. Yes. Now the, the 3D printer, is this, your, is this your only other 3D printer? I have an MP Select Mini kind of. Okay. So you've got that, you've got this. So this 3D printer blows both of those away for build volume. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. What what would you print if you had this 3D printer at home? Probably like a stormtrooper or something. Some, so, something to just, fit over my head. Yes. Now I think you I think you should probably well, I mean, what the heck? Just print it and see what happens, but I think the first one you print is gonna be too big. You're gonna have to find that scale factor for you. But so, so yeah, make it so what? Let's do it, you know. I love that. That is fantastic. So, so this this kit, I, I don't remember the cost. I'll have the cost flash up on screen. But it's it's cheaper than a lot of 3D printers. But how long did it take you to build this? You were here build, putting this thing together for how long? Like two weeks? Yeah, but that would only be Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Yeah. So it was it was like a grand total of like eight to 12 hours putting this thing together. 18. 18 hours, but yeah, I would believe 18 hours to put it together. So 18 hours to put this together plus this price for that 3D print. Do you think that that's, you know, like, is that worth it? Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly 18 because all the other stuff at the Makerspace, you <laughs> distracted. get distracted. You. <laughs> Maybe yeah. me. But, I mean, overall, what did you think of the process of building? You, you've built a, a Delta 3D printer before, didn't you? Yeah. Have you ever built a 3D printer from a kit? I don't know why you hired me. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you learn from doing that? Problem solving? Definitely. I mean, you ran into problems and you solved them. Yeah. 
And, and overall, I think, you know, whenever you have a kit like this, I feel like you learn so much just in building the kit. Now here's the next question. Do you want to do another? Yes. Really? Because I would be like, no, I've, I've done it once. Now from now on, just give me printers that I can just start printing stuff on. Well, I'm 11. I don't have a job. Okay, fair enough. I'm not really into any sports, except for memorizing pie. That's <laughs> so okay fair enough I have time to come here you yeah, have time to come here and build another kit so maybe I'll employ you to build another one of these kits when they come in but overall um, I'm, I'm really impressed with the work you did on this and it's printing and it's working and we're doing not a Benchy but another boat uh, and we've already tried it once yeah uh, you want to look at that it uh, yeah it failed part way but why did this one fail it got tangled around the spool holder. Yeah, kinked filament. So, uh, and I was here watching it when it happened, but I didn't monitor the filament, so my bad. So we're gonna try that again, and then you're gonna print your big build. So I, I have one question for you. Uh, how are you gonna get this thing home? Because I think this is gonna be your 3D printer, I think. <laughs> Just carry it with you. Have mom and dad help you carry it. No, my house is only 10 miles away. <laughs> That's right. Well, the other thing I want to do is you've got a spool of filament back here. That spool of filament was given to me by a company called Melt Ink, and I think that they would like you to have that spool of filament as well. We got that filament for the Delta 301 that we did because they were the only people I could find that did cyan, magenta, and yellow, and they sent me cyan, magenta, and yellow, but that printer doesn't work, so have the cyan. Thanks. You're welcome, and thank you, Melt Ink, for giving that to him. Well, is there anything else you want to say about this printer and the build of it? Yeah, there. this power cord, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's duct taped in because it's too loose. I'll take some pictures of that and put it up in the edit. I got it. I tripped over it and that <laughs> happened, Ruined the print. So. Now, but does this one have a, a lost print or power, power recovery? It does. I'm bad at reading instructions, so I don't know how to use it, but it does have it. Well, let me know how that goes, and, and if before this video airs, uh, make sure to find the link to my blog in the comments, and I'll, if, if any development has happened since recording this video and it going up on the air, uh, I'll be sure to put the notes down there. But Isaac, it's so cool to meet you here at the Makerspace. It's so cool to have you here, and it's so cool that you built a three a huge 3D printer, and I, I was a terrible mentor. I didn't help you a bit. So, well, or I was a great mentor because I let you have this learning experience yourself, but either way, you did it. Congratulations, man. And I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, let Isaac know what you thought of him in this video, and hey, if you're ever in our area, come down and check out our makerspace, but thanks, Isaac, for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Safety first. Yes. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.